the background, uh, you're seeing a, a city. Actually, that's the county map. I want the city map. So uh, I guess I've got to open my city map. So this is the county map of the whole country that I did today for the COVID-19 map. Uh, and I thought it was the regular one that I was supposed to have. So I'm going to uh, save the changes. So when you shut down a Map Business Online map, you can choose to save the changes or not. And you can see uh, I've got my uh, my maps. Uh, oh, I clicked the new map button. Let's click the map library. And let's click the mass COVID map. So we're going to open that up. A lot of COVID maps back and forth for me lately. And so the creation of a city map uh, COVID uh, map view was something I'd really wanted to do since the beginning of the crisis. You can see you, you can actually turn off the toolbar up here, that little button, and you can see my uh, title bar at the top. I can adjust this to reflect the correct day. So let's make sure we do this right. And that title bar is always available down here. So the title bar is under the uh, little edit gear. And there's your title right there, show map title. Once you turn that on, that opens up and you can edit it just like I just did. Bring the toolbar back. And so the city limits layer I grabbed from here. So I just brought down my list of additional layers and you can see city limits is not on there because I selected it and then added it to the map, which puts it in my map and data tab here, city limits. The background map I turned off, I could turn it on if I wanted to. Some people might think that's a better view. I actually felt this was a more focused view. Uh, so now I've got my city limits layer color coded and I did that color coding. You can do it here by walking through the color coding functionality with county selected, my data selected, my column of that data then selected down here, uh, which in this case was these counts. And then you can see the counts of COVID by town uh, and then they're, they're color coded. Uh, here on the map view. You could also get to that city limits color coding functionality here by clicking the edit gear in map and data and then clicking color code map layer, which gets you through the same sort of uh, scope uh, so that you can see how I did my ranges. And that's really what I wanted to kind of just show you a little bit more detail on here. So there's my data layer. I went with cases total as the column in my data and then down here it started at four and let's look at that mass data so i can explain that a little bit so this is the data that i got from massachusetts and i had to cut it and paste it and that's why it looks kind of funky uh, and then you'll notice this data record right here there were a lot that said less than five and so i just went in and changed that to four figuring it's but somewhere between one and five so i'll just put four down and that's how I saved my data. If I'd left that symbol in there, that greater than or less than symbol or any other random symbols, Map Business Online won't like it and won't process the data well. Uh, so you'll notice that in your, in, in your at some point in your map process, you'll realize there's something wrong with the data uh, and you can go back and fix it. So I, I worked with ranges, you know, starting with four to five, just so that we had the lowest possible numbers reflected on the map. And you can see uh, that the there are some very light white um, areas here that uh, reflect that. Some of them, you can see all the way down here, if there's a, there's a geography that has no uh, ranges, zero, or maybe less than four, then it's going to be gray. That's little, a little default all the way down at the bottom. And you can see one there where there's a zero. Um, and so then I, uh, four to five was the lightest color. Then I, I brought it up to yellow, orange, orange darker. I used pink and then I went dark red for the, 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 the uh, towns that had the most prevalent COVID. I like dark red for that. You could use a black. You could use, you know, some other color. Uh, that's up to you. 
Uh, but I did like that. And the other element to the color coding that I thought might be fun for you to see. So if I if I dig into the color, so you can go into the color and you can change the shades. Um, and, and again, you're looking, you can do this with any of these buttons that are color related. But what I've found with the COVID mapping is that I can use that yellow button, that yellow button, these two orange buttons, and then go bright red. And it that works as a scheme that I think kind of lends some urgency to the view uh, and actually gives, you know, the um, the map viewer a sense of of quickly by looking at the map where there's an issue with COVID. And you can see in Boston, of course, 6,744 cases. I grew up here in Rockport. That's 24 cases. My mom's there. Um, we almost had her in rehab as the beginning of this process, start of the emergency. We did not put her in rehab. We brought her home. And so she's there. She's isolated. We've got nurses and stuff coming in, but we feel good about what's going on there. There's not a lot happening in uh, Rockport. Gloucester's 111. That's more of a city. And then I noticed that Lynn is 1387. They had more than any other town on the North Shore where I grew up. Um, Lynn is really a hot spot, and it surprised me. Um, the, and again, this is as of 422, um, I think. Uh, I should have left that on the title as 422 because the data hasn't been updated yet. It'll be updated tonight, and I'll go in and update this information. So that's how you color code and think about color coding uh, and make some decisions around color coding. You've also got the ability to you know, address the labeling. So if I go into the city limits layer and I click edit gear and I go to label, then I can decide you know, what I'm gonna have for data in my labels. And you can see I've got reported cases here. So there's flexible fields up to five of them. And I just wanted to put reported cases in here. That's all I wanted. That's what this map was focused on. I didn't want to get into deaths and all that other stuff. I just wanted reported cases. And so that's what's in there. And you can see, you know, there's a zero, uh, which is going to be associated with the color gray. Um, and you've got, you know, different numbers at different places that are listed in the labels. So that then you think about, okay, can people read my labels? And those controls are here. This is an auto label control. And you'll notice it under formatting, auto label. Custom label is when you hover over a, a, a map layer division or city limit, for instance, and something pops up. That's a custom label. Auto label is the actual label of the city limit, the zip code, the state. And that functionality for controlling that look and feel is here. So I could have made those auto labels really large. Doesn't really help my map view, I don't think maybe normal, that's not so bad. I could have made them darker. Maybe that helps the, the map a little bit. I For some reason, I kind of liked the gray, but against the gray background, maybe that's not such a good thing either. And that background color, by the way, is under the overall main edit gear for background color right there. So I could have made that, you know, uh, pastel green, that's not quite pastel. You know, there's different options in terms of coloring. I don't know what the best is. It's hard to say. You try different things. You think about who's going to be viewing this. I mean, is it a nursery school or is it your CEO? Um, different people are going to manage that in different ways. Do you need map and data to be showing or do you want to shut it down? Do you want to get rid of the toolbar? You know, and then you can always use your little... Um, snippet gear or your snippet tool to uh, create a new PDF or JPEG, I guess it's a JPEG or PNG, and then save that. So that's that's one of the ways you can save things in Map Business Online is a, um, an image that you might want to embed into a PowerPoint. So these are some considerations that you might want to consider as you uh, build and 